Hi, uh, in this today's tutorial we're going to do another uh, tutorial on how to use data in ASP.NET and today's tutorial is going to focus on the details view data display control uh, that lets us look at one record at a time from a database but then also lets us delete, update, edit, and actually insert new records uh, right in the details view. Uh, so um, we're going to connect to the same database we've used in the last couple examples, the soccer team's database. And I've already got a, data, a website created, uh, and I've already put the soccer team's database in my app data folder, and I've added a script manager control and an update panel to the page so that we can use Ajax. Now we're going to be using a couple different controls on this page. One is the main control that we're going to use, which is the details view control. So I'm going to drag that on the page. Uh, but I'm also going to put below that, I'm going to drag, uh, after we use the data views, details view, I'm going to set a grid view control so that we can see updates to the database right on the page. So I've put my details view on. We'll go to the smart tag, and um, we're going to have to choose a data source for this so that we can populate it. Uh, I'm going to just create a new data source. And just as we've done before, since we're using an off, uh, uh, Access 2007 database, we want to use the database uh, standard database data source type and hit OK. Uh, we need to create a connection to that database, so we're going to do a new connection. We're going to change the data source to be an Access database file. We're going to find that database, and it should open us up right into that folder. We're in data tutorial 4, app data. There it is, Soccer Teams ACCDB. Hit open. And we're going to test the connection. And the connection test succeeded. We'll hit OK. So we've created our connection string. We're going to hit Next. And this just asks, asks us if we want to save that connection string in our web config file. And we're going to say yes so that we can use it in other pages if we choose later. So we'll hit Next. And what we want to put in this details view is we're just going to look at players. And the details view is basically uh, lets you page one player at a time. So you're seeing the details of a record one record at a time. Rather than seeing it in a table view like the grid view does, this does one record at a time. So we're going to use the player table. We're going to choose all the values of the player table. So we're going to select everything from the player table. Uh, and we're also going to click Advanced, and we're going to do Generate, Insert, Update, and Delete Statements. And the reason we're doing that is so that we can add some functionality to our Details view to allow us to insert new records, to update existing records, and to delete existing records. So to do that, we need to create the SQL statements that go along with that. So we're going to hit Generate. We're going to hit OK. Uh, and then we'll go to Next, and we'll test the query. And the query works. The Select Query selects everything from the player table. We're going to hit Finish. Now, uh, a few things we want to do on this uh, grid view, or I'm sorry, this details view, is we want to enable paging because what that allows is for us to page from one player to the next in the table. If we don't enable paging, it kind of makes this details view not very useful to us right now. Uh, we're also going to enable inserting and enable editing and enable deleting. So we can insert new records, delete existing records, and edit existing records. Um, and then I'm going to do some things with the formatting. First, I'm going to auto format it. So instead of just the standard unformatted table, we'll pick something that looks a little bit nicer. So how about uh, slate? We'll apply or hit OK. And then uh, I'm going to change the field names for uh, the buttons on the bottom. So instead of having them as links, we're going to change the edit, delete, and new to be buttons. So We'll go up here, and we'll change that to a button, and hit OK. Okay, And we're going to hit Save. Now if I run this as it is, just to give you an idea of what this is going to look like, the details view shows one record at a time. So we see this first one is Tim Howard, Everton, FC, GK, USA. If I go to 8, it shows me the 8th record, Jamie Carragher. If I go to 10, it shows me the 10th record. If I click the three dots, it takes me to the next set so forth. So basically it's letting us see the details of each player on one page at a time. And obviously we can go in and change the dimensions and everything so that everything looks consistent in size and shape, but uh, that's a little out of the scope of this tutorial. So we're going to go back in, and now that we've got that there, uh, I'm going to also add a grid view below just so it shows us all the records in the database. That way as we make changes to uh, database records using the edit, delete, and new, we'll see them right away show up in this data grid. So I'm going to go in and add a new data source. We're going to select, again, everything from 
the player table, we can use the same connection that we just con created, the connection string, because it's the same database we're connecting to. I'm going to select from the player table. We're going to select everything. Uh, and we're going to hit next and just test it and finish. And I'm also going to format this just to look a little bit nicer. Uh, what did we use last time? We'll just leave it as slate. Hit OK. And we've got that set up. Um, we'll enable sorting. and But I'm not going to enable paging so I can see them all on one page at a time. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's save everything and we'll run it again. And so now we'll see below here, it's got a list of all the players in the database and at the top we've got the details on one player. So since we created the select statement and then we also created the insert, edit, and delete, or insert, update, and delete SQL statements, this means that we can use these buttons here to make changes to the records. So if I want to edit, for example, Tim Howard, I can click edit right here and it opens this up and gives me the ability to change it right here so I can make it say Timothy, for example, Howard, and hit update and you'll see uh, that it should have updated below. If we reload the page, it updates down here to reload the page. Okay, so when we reload it, we'll see that this has been updated below. Okay, if I want to uh, delete a record, uh, we can delete it. So I deleted Tim Howard. When I refresh the page, you'll see that Tim Howard is now gone. Now, if I want to add a new record, I hit new and we get this form and I can enter in, put Tim Howard back in. Tim Howard will do, uh, he was on. Everton FC player position, GK uh, nationality USA, and hit insert. Now you notice nothing happened here. If I hit refresh, he's not been inserted. Uh, and now the question becomes, why didn't that work? And actually, the reason it didn't work is because we actually need to make a slight modification to our insert statement. And the reason for that is in this database that I created, the ID field, the unique identifier, is an auto-generated field in the Access database. And so when we try to do an insert into that, it's trying to insert a value there that is being auto-generated by the database, and the database isn't allowing that to happen. So it's causing a little error, but nothing's being thrown or showing to us, shown to us on the web page. So we just need to make a quick modification to our insert um, uh, statement in our ASP.NET application. So we're going to go back and hit stop. We'll come back here. All right, we'll come down here. Uh, and we will go look at our source view. Now, in our source view, things get a little confusing because a lot's going on. A lot of code has been added by Visual Studio for us. Uh, if we scroll down and find our data sources, we want to find our SQL data source 1, or the first one we created. And this is where we created our select statement, our insert statement, our delete statement, and our update statement. Now, we're selecting everybody from uh, the player table here. And the problem comes is when we're doing our insert, we're inserting uh, into the player table these values into the ID, player first name, player last name, player team, player position, player nationality, the values from the parameters, these question marks mean the parameters that were created in our form. Now, we don't want to insert anything into the ID field because that's an auto-generated number in our Access database. Now, this is only an issue if when you create the Access database, you use that key to be an auto-generated uh, ID. If you use it as just a simple text field, then this wouldn't be an issue. You could type something in there. So we're going to delete that first field. So we're not going to insert an ID. And then we also need to delete here one of the question marks since we have we're not going to have as many parameters. We're only be inserting five things into the table and the database will create the key for us automatically. Then we just need to do one additional thing here. We just need to find in the insert parameters. So these parameters correspond to uh, the stuff that we're going to put in the database. We just need to get rid of the one for the ID. So we're only making a modification to the insert uh, SQL statement. So we get rid of the one for ID we hit save and we go back to our design view uh, and we'll run this again. Now this time if I want to insert a new one I'll click new and we'll say uh, Tim Howard, we'll say Everton FC, we'll say GK and we'll say USA and we'll click insert. And so it inserted it, and now if we scroll down to the bottom, 
it's not there, but we'll refresh it so that that data table gets updated. And there he is at the bottom, Tim Howard, Everton, FC, GK. So it was inserted, and it has an auto-updated field of 26. So it just automatically incremented it by one. When we ran that query before, it tried to insert it, but it had some errors. So it incremented the auto field to 25, but there was a mistake. And so the next time, it auto-incremented it to 26. So we've done a successful insert. So this was just kind of a quick way to do some inserts, updates, and deletes using the details view. Uh, so we've got the details view allows us to edit a record, allows us to delete a record, and allows us to create a new record. And this grid view below is just for us to be able to see what's going on in the table as changes were being made. Um, we, can, we can even go in uh, and look in the database itself and see what changes have been made there. So if we go into the player table, you can see directly that the Tim Howard record that was ID 1 was deleted as we did and here's the new one that we added down below with the ID number 26. Okay, so that was just a simple tutorial on using the details view. Uh, the details view isn't the best way to do inserting obviously because we're not controlling anything about what's being entered so if you want to restrict values uh, these are just freeform text boxes um, so it's a little bit unclean in terms of entering data, but it does work uh, for putting data in the database. The next tutorial we'll, look, we'll talk a little bit more about how to have a little bit more control over that process, but this was just a simple tutorial on using the details view. I hope that was helpful. The, uh, this tutorial was made using Cam Studio, some open source software for doing screen capture. Uh, I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.